Hello and welcome to the second lesson in this video series on creating a TK Enter GUI to interface with an Arduino. In this video, we're going to add a blink checkbox. This will let us enable and disable a blinking mode for this code. You'll see we can make it blink when we check the box and when the box is checked and you hit turn on. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Arduino code. Remember this code is simply waiting for the input from the Python code. In this case, we're just going to add a new input which will enable us to blink the LED. At line 25, you can see where this additional code was added. We're going to check for the user input, the lowercase b. And if that's received, we're going to run the for loop that will blink the LED. This for loop will control how many times the LED will blink and then the duration of the blinking. In this case, we're going to run the loop 10 times and we're going to blink the LED for 200 milliseconds. You'll see here, I put the delays that sandwich the high signal. This will ensure that the LED will be high for 200 milliseconds and then low for 200 milliseconds. And as we iterate through the loop, that will be the number of times we get the blinks. Let's shift our attention to the Python code. There are two main updates here. We're creating a blink LED function and we're creating the checkbox widget. I went ahead and pulled out the new code so it would be easy to see for this lesson. Let's take a look at the blink LED function. This function contains an if statement. It says if blink state dot get equals one, then serial write lowercase b. Remember the Arduino is looking for our inputs and to put us into blink mode, we need to write the lowercase b, which is what this function's purpose is. This function checks to see what the button state is. Is the box checked or is it unchecked? The state of the button when it's checked is one and when it's not checked, it's zero. We use a special variable for blink state. It's called a control variable so what this does is it links the button state to the widget and then allows us to access that state in other areas. Notice in the if statement, it's blink state dot get. So this method retrieves the state because blink state is an object that contains the value and get is the method that we use to retrieve that value from the object. So now we know we use a control variable to get the state of the button. Let's look at turn on LED. I added an additional if statement in this case. Remember, when the blink LED checkbox is checked, we automatically check its state. So if it's zero, meaning it's not checked, then we won't get the blink enable. But if it is checked, then it will blink. So that's one case where we could cause the LED to blink from our GUI. The other case is if the box is checked and we hit on, then we should also blink the LED. So there are two outcomes of the turn on LED function. One, if the box is not checked, then we simply do a serial write lowercase o, which turns on the LED to just be solidly on, it's not blinking. What happens if the box is checked is you'll still send the lowercase o to turn on the LED but then right after that, the next instruction is to check for the blink enable checkbox. And once the blink enable is verified, we go ahead and put the Arduino into blink mode. Notice that we write the lowercase o in all cases when the on button is selected. If blink is enabled, we still write that lowercase o. However, this serial command happens so quickly, you won't even realize that that command was sent to the Arduino because the blink command comes in right after it and we won't perceive that delay. Another small note is you don't necessarily need to check blink state in that if statement. You could just call blink LED. However, I think it's more intuitive for this lesson to keep that if statement check in there just to drive home the point. Now that we have the context of what we're trying to do here and how we pass the button state to these functions, let's take a look at how we actually created the widget. You'll see we did a check button underscore blink equals TK check button 
and then we have three parameters here. We have root, which is the window to which it will be placed, variable, which is that control variable, the blink state, which we reviewed, and then we have the command. This command is called anytime the widget is engaged. So whether you check the box on or off, blink LED will be called, which is why we need to check its state to see what the next path forward is. And recall that when you create a widget, you also need to place it within the window. So here we're going to use grid. And because we already have an on and off button, the next column that's available is two. So we'll go ahead and update column to two and keep the row at zero. Let's take a final look at the Python code. One additional update to make in the widget creation of the checkbox is I added the parameter text. What this does is places text to the right of the checkbox. So the user will know what this checkbox will do. In this case, it's going to cause it to blink, so I labeled it as blink. Thank you for watching this video, and I've hoped you learned more about how you can customize your GUI. In this case, we added a blinking enable checkbox. Stay tuned for more, and let me know what you think in the comment section.